Good evening from New York. I'm Chris Hayes. Tonight, police have released the names of the five victims in Saturday's shooting at Club Q, an LGBTQ nightclub in Colorado Springs. Daniel Aston, Ashley Paw, Kelly Loving, Derek Rump, and Raymond Green Vance. Officials say the tragedy could have been far, far worse if not for the heroic actions of a guy named Richard Fierro, an Army veteran who was at the club with his family, taking in the drag show at the time of the attack. Fierro, who served in Iraq and Afghanistan, says he went into combat mode as he rushed across the venue to successfully disarm the shooter. This evening, the mayor of Colorado Springs praised Fierro for his heroism. I had the opportunity before I came here today to talk to Richard Fierro, identified as one of the two heroes that subdued uh, the uh, suspect in this case. And in my opinion, I think the opinion of everyone involved uh, saved a lot of lives. I have never encountered a person who had engaged in such heroic actions that was so humble about it. He simply said to me, I was trying to protect my family. The shooter, who is in custody, has been charged with five counts of first-degree murder, five counts of bias-motivated crime causing bodily injury. The Department of Justice is also investigating whether federal charges are warranted. Now, this attack exists within a number of contexts, including, clearly, the crisis of mass shootings in this country spurred on by easy access to weapons of war. We know this shooter used an AR-15-style semi-automatic rifle, the same type of gun used in numerous other deadly incidents of mass violence and atrocities like this one. We also can't ignore the fact that this attack comes during a particularly fraught and dangerous moment for the gay and trans community. Here's the last post on Club Q's Facebook page prior to the shooting. It was this advertisement for an upcoming all-ages drag brunch, which was scheduled for Sunday, the morning after the shooting. Now, in recent months, drag events, particularly all-ages events like that, like brunches, story hours at public libraries, have become a point of obsession for right-wing forces seeking to demonize LGBTQ folks and falsely accuse them of attempting to indoctrinate straight children. And this has led to an increase in intimidation, threats of violence. Back in June, one example, members of the far-right group known as the Proud Boys stormed a drag story hour in California where they hurled homophobic and transphobic slurs at those in attendance. The sheriff's office described the right-wing agitators as, quote, extremely aggressive with a threatening, violent demeanor, causing people to fear for their safety. And just a few weeks ago, Proud Boys stalked a drag brunch at a North Carolina brewery with one of the events organizers saying, quote, the Proud Boys were very hostile, openly harassing patrons as they entered and exited the brewery. They were calling them groomers, pedophiles, and trying to intimidate everyone. The Proud Boys came to fight. These are just two examples absolutely the tip of the iceberg. The right's fixation with gay and trans communities is becoming increasingly reckless. Earlier this year, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis infamously signed into law what critics have called the Don't Say Gay Bill, which presents, prevents some teachers from even discussing the existence of gay and trans folks. In some cases, could force school administrators to out trans students. Last month, dozens of House Republicans introduced a national version of that law, which is actually worse, if you'll believe it, manages to be even more draconian than the Florida law, and more reckless, wide open. And it seems very likely Republicans will hold a vote on that bill when they formally retake the House in January. And in the run-up to the midterm elections, anti-trans rhetoric in particular was constantly used by right-wing politicians and Republicans for all kinds of different offices. Republicans even tried to unsuccessfully fearmonger against Michigan's referendum enshrining abortion rights by falsely claiming the bill would lead to the forced sterilization of children. The Michigan ballot proposal passed overwhelmingly. Republicans vastly underperformed in the midterms after going all in on anti-trans issues. But that has not stopped them. They are still at it, taking issue with trans people existing at all. Donald Trump dedicated a significant amount of time in his third presidential announcement speech to anti-trans broadsides. A Trump handpicked candidate for Senate in Georgia, Herschel Walker, trying to close out his race in the runoff, is making trans women participating in sports as one of his closing arguments. Top issue for Georgia voters about who you want to send to the Senate ahead of next month's runoff election. And it's important to note, however, this is not just elected officials and political candidates. In many cases, these politicians are taking their cues from right-wing media. Those incidents at drag events I mentioned a few moments ago, 
They happened within the context of conservative media personalities fear-mongering against queer folks. New York Times noting, quote, events featuring performers in drag have received disapproving coverage with some of the most prominent voices on the political right, including the Fox News hosts Tucker Carlson and Jesse Waters, who frequently claim the events are dangerous for children. Tucker, in particular, seems fixated on this anti-queer panic. In addition to his diatribes against drag shows, he's platformed anti-trans activists, used particularly vicious and extreme rhetoric to attack children's hospitals for providing trans youth with medical care. Just as an example, in one segment of his primetime show, he put up the faces of a Tennessee hospital's board of directors and read their names aloud to his audience. Now, in this climate, you may not be surprised to hear that threats against these hospitals that have this kind of care on the rise. Boston Children's, we reported on this, Boston Children's Hospital receiving its third bomb threat just last week. 